Hi. This is a short introduction and tutorial on a flat file database program called fields.awk. <coughs> this is a shell script that I wrote uh, a few years back and I've been using it for many years myself. Um, it saves its database uh, information in single files. That's why it's called a flat file database. Uh, why would someone want a flat file database uh, when there are other database programs available? Um, it's true that there's a lot of large, uh, very powerful database programs available for, their, for the computer users. Uh, including those uh, accessible from Microsoft Office Suite or the Open Office Suite, or now called the Libra Office Suite, um, and I just find those uh, a little bit non-intuitive to use. There's also uh, command line or text-based uh, database programs such as PostgreSQL and SQLite, which which have very uh, powerful uh, search engines um, using the structured query language. Those are wonderful programs. I just find they're a little bit overkill for the uh, for simple usage. Um, I wanted to write something that would be uh, useful for an individual who just wants to keep track of uh, home databases such as uh, maintenance records on a vehicle or inventory for their small shop or any kind of uh, records of uh, uh, photographs that you might have, um, which is um, simple to use and saves the information in a single file which can be stored on a thumb drive or, or wherever. So that's the idea behind it. Um, this is the code of fields.awk. It's a shell script which has awk modules. You can see the uh, awk usage here. Um, I used the awk scripting language partly because it was one of the first ones I, I learned to uh, to use, and I was familiar with it. But it's also because it's specifically designed to work with. Uh, text files that are written in a tabular fashion, which have columns and rows, which is basically what databases are. Um, one of the key features of this uh, database is this line here, which I will highlight, n equals split field string field names. Um, using a, a double colon as, as a field delimiter. This uh, this is what creates a two-dimensional uh, array which the program uses to uh, step through and display its output data uh, when, it, in, when it's in read mode. Every file in the beginning of the database uh, in question has a, has a, uh, a first line which has a special format which which indicates the uh, field structure of the records to be used. Um, I'm going to open up the program and you'll see that it's for use on a terminal like an Xterm or a genome uh, terminal something like that. Um, I could be using it on a different type of terminal here You'll see the same thing. Okay, I'm going to exit that. Um, so, in other words, it's not a GUI program. If uh, someone with um, X terminal uh, programming prowess wanted to con uh, convert this, upgrade it to uh, a GUI interface, that would be fine. I find that it's, it doesn't really need it. Um, the program starts on on startup by checking for an existing storage fol folder for your database files. Um, there's a default s setup where it looks for a file called uh, dot, uh, db folder in which the location of the folder is 
is stored. If it doesn't find that, it assumes that there isn't one, and it asks you if you want to create a default folder. So if I say yes, it automatically creates it. And I will quit at that point. I'm going to show you what happened there. Um, in my home folder, it has now created a a database file uh, called DB files. Now I had previously stored my material in a, in a backup folder just so I could show you that function because if it once this folder exists it no longer asks you for that at the beginning of the startup of the uh, program. So if I'm just going to take my material here and uh, transfer it to that new one and Remove this. So my database files are now in this in this standard folder, and also, if I say there is a .db folder file in my home folder, and it is storing the location of the storage files. So that that is your initial setup. And if you don't want to use that particular folder for your storage files, then you don't have to. You can uh, you can say no, and the program will prompt you for the name of uh, of your choice or the location of your storage folder of your choice. But once you have that set up, if you start up the program again. Now it prevents you with the standard, it, it says using specified file, files folder, whatever you've specified, and it presents you with the standard uh, set of options of the program, which are to read from your database, to write to your database, to edit the database file directly, changing your default editor, uh, selecting the data file you want to use from your folder, uh, creating a new data file, there's a help section and there's quit. So if I if I hit uh, H for help, there's a there's a short help section. Um, in the help section, you will note uh, it, it describes the line one of the database files, uh, its special structure, which uh, begins with uh, three at symbols and then a series of field names. Uh, separated by double colons and, and a double colon at the end, and this this d this is what the program uses to uh, determine the names of the fields of each record of the specific database, so that it can uh, prompt you for input and display the output when you're reading the file appropriately. So if I look back at my database files, for example, if I take one, and you will see. And the first line has that structure. Or if I uh, look at another one, again, it has the same structure but a different number of, uh, of fields because this, this, this only has, this is a, a database of old uh, slide photographs which were taken years ago and so I'm just using the file name, the subject, uh, what film was used, uh, date and location the picture was taken and so on. So this is the, uh, the way that it works. If I go back to the program itself, I go quit. Now at the moment the, the uh, program is not reading from any database uh, so I will select, use S for select it displays to me the names of the uh, database files in my folder. So if I choose one, say Corolla, it is. It shows me that now I'm working on the Corolla text, and it shows me the file, the field structure of this particular database. And now I can either read from this database or write to it. So if I use read, uh, it it gives me the option of saving the output from the search to a particular file. Um, let's say we uh, we can ignore that, but if I say yes to demonstrate, it will give me the name of the file, let's say breaks, 
and um, case sensitive no enter search search string I'm looking for any records which refer to breaks and now it shows me that I have matching records one two three four a uh, total of four records within the database which uh, refer to ma maintenance on the Corolla which uh, had to do with breaks and I say quit uh, and it indicates that the file was saved as breaks.txt in home desktop and that's a default I, every time I save a file I put it to my desktop but uh, you can change that default uh, behavior by editing the um, editing the, the program file so if I look in my uh, desktop folder um, I will see the file breaks.txt and sure enough it has the output of my uh, program so, okay, I'm just going to delete that, and we go back, okay, so um, if I want to write to this file, I can write a new record, uh, given the date, um, I'll say October 26th. 14, work description, um, say changed headlight bulb, parts, bulb, part number, GE H11 maybe, um, total cost, maybe ten dollars comments no comments odometer blah 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 okay so now if I want to see if that new record is there I'll read from it don't save it not sensitive search string um, bulb. We go to the end and there's my new record which I just made. It's now in the database file. Now since that record doesn't make any sense I'm going to use the edit option to edit the actual database file. If I go to the end there's my new database line. I'm going to delete that and save it. And you may have noticed that I'm using the Vim editor and some people not, might not be um, comfortable with that so you can select you can change the editor with uh, this C option okay that hit, hit, hit C and uh, it asks you to enter a default a new default editor um, so you can put in Emacs or uh, whichever editor you you like e even open office if you wanted to whatever editor you wanted to use to edit that file you can make your default but I'm just going to leave it the same as it, it is and um, make sure that, that still works and I'm still using Vim quit alright now what if I wanted to write uh, in in a different sense if I wanted to <coughs> modify a particular line of a um, of an entry uh, I'm going to get to that rather than modifying uh, an existing database I will, I will make a new one. Let's say we wanted to make a new database file. Okay, we hit N for new file. Uh, there's our existing database files. Um, let's say I want to create a new one, uh, say a database on trees. Um, how, and it asked me how many fields what is the new uh, database structure going to be? How many fields will there be in this uh, in these records? Well, let's just say three. And field name one is common name. Field name two is scientific name. Uh, field name three is type. So now we have it says your new database file should be should be ready to select 
Um, and so let's look in the folder. Let's say uh, let's uh, select. Now it says uh, it, you can see now that the trees database exists in the folder because we just created it. So select that. Uh, now we're using the trees database folder. Okay, so let's uh, edit that file, and you can see that all it has now is the is the first line because that's all it did. It created a new a new database file with with the field structure um, delineated in that line one. So, but it doesn't contain any data yet. So let's exit that. Um, let's add a new line. Write to new record common name say oak say an oak tree uh, scientific name. Uh, Quercus, I think, type uh, deciduous. Okay, so uh, let's uh, write uh, another new record, say pine, pinus, um, evergreen. Okay, now let's uh, read from that. Um, if you hit if you don't make an entry for the search string, if you just hit enter, it will display all the uh, records in the database. And right now there's only two. And you'll see that uh, there's uh, the record for oak, the record for pine, and there it is. So that's the way uh, the program works. Now if I want to modify a line, let's say I write using the modify an existing record mode, then it asks for a record key to match a particular the particular record that you're that you're looking for. Let's say I want to modify the oak, um, and it shows uh, the information in the oak record, uh, and it asks you which field do you want to change. Well, let's say I'll change uh, field number three, and uh, I can new enter the new data. Well, it's deciduous, so I'm going to call it leafy. Now it has changed the file. If I now look, if I read. Um, the oak record, and you can see that it has, it has been changed, in fact, uh, so that the type is now leafy rather than deciduous. Okay. Um, that is about the basics. Uh, if I just w do one more uh, read uh, demonstration. Um, Okay, that's the same one. Let's uh, select a new data file. If I go uh, photo base for records of photographs, read Paris, and according to my records, I had five slide shots that were taken somewhere in Paris back in 1971. So. That is basically how the program works. If anyone thinks that that might be useful for them, you can contact me, um, and I can send you a copy, and you can try it on your Linux box. Bye for now.